Come here. Ran me into this poxy decorator's job. No, it was in the post office window. You ain't done a stroke of work for the last month. Money's tight. It's time you earned an honest crust. Well, I'm not in the best of health. Shoulders as stiff as a china doll's. And uh, a touch of gout into the bargain. Too many jars of wine, you mean? Four hotel rooms to be done up. Uh, how long's that going to take, woman? Ned and I'll be home sick for our own beds. The railway in at Swinehead's too far for you to be travelling back and forth. Oh, at least I'll be out of your sight, you old juiceless crab apple. Out of sight you <coughs> might be, you lazy old devil. The railway in's one place you won't be drinking and misbehaving. I wouldn't count on it. Go on, with that. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. Oh, yes. I think I can count on it. God almighty. What does temperance mean? It means a desert without an oasis. As dry as a spinster's lips. I can understand now why Mrs. Betts let you come with me, the cunning old cow. Oh, there, boy, oh. Are you Silas, the decorator? That's right. Humble artisan, come to wield a nifty brush like yourself. Hope it's not uh, thirst-making, painting a sign like that. <laughs> Where's the governor? I'm the landlord, Charles White, and I'll thank you not to make jokes about our temperance notice. No offence. Abstinence is our trademark since I became proprietor. Alcohol and the bar have been banished. Well, a uh, uh, railway hotel, what about them weary parched train travellers? It suits certain guests. There's a public house along the road. See my wife at reception. I'll be down soon as I've finished here. Uncle Silas. Signing away one of the joys of life, it seems to me, lad. Drunk is he who prostrate lies without power to drink or rice. No, no, Marty, we're going to have a bit of a struggle here. Uh, is Mrs. White around? The owner's wife. Can I help you? Looking for uh, Mrs. White. Oh, that's me, Queenie to everybody. You must be Silas. That's right, and this is uh, my assistant, Ned. How do you do? Take these into the scullery for me. Sorry about Cuthbert, he's stone deaf. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Are you seen my husband? Up the ladder. Jack of all trades, like yourself, looks like. Well, Charlie don't believe in having too many staff. Besides, we're quite quiet at the moment, except for a few commercial travellers and a, a pair of maiden aunts. So the place needs livening up then, eh? <laughs> I hope you're not a drinker. You sound like a drinker. Me? I can uh, take it or leave it. You cleared everything ready in them bedrooms? Shall I take Silas up and show him? I'll do it. You best get on laundering them sheets. It's a fine drying day. The ends will have laid soon, and there's a list of things to get through the kitchen garden. We're very self-sufficient here. I can see that. Didn't expect. 
expect you to bring an apprentice. Prepare the boy your bed, surely. But no wages, and there'll be a deduction from yours for his food. Distemper for the ceiling, gloss paint, and a new wallpaper. Now, once you've prepared the woodwork, just one coat of paint, remember? No need of a second coat. You said so? These are all different patterns. End of rolls, bought cheap. I dare say you could line some of the walls to look about the same. Where do we sleep? Well, this will be your quarters in here. No sense wasting a little hotel room. You can cover the bedding while you work. What about the oars? Loose box free in the backyard. Another deduction from your pay, of course, for his hay feed. Breakfast at 6.30 prompt. Midday bread and cheese on the job. Hot meal in the evening. In the dining room. I'll make it look busy. Charge extra for earthquakes, do you? Room's closest to the railway. You'll soon get used to it. Best get your things in and make a start. You were late turning up as it was. Have you ever met such a mean, mangy miser of a man? And that wife of his puts up with it? I don't know. I like trains, Uncle Silas. Well, tell it all. I ain't gonna get tipsy on a whiff of paint. <gasps> Uncle Silas! Uncle Silas, look! Look! Oh. <laughs> Must have got the labels mixed up. Turns out it's a bottle of red currant wine. <laughs> Come on, lad. Unpack. You looks to be a fast worker. All this gets value for money. Please my husband, that will. Uh, yeah, counts his fathers and apnees as uh, golden sovereigns, right? That's Charlie. He even has a lot of money box inside his safe. Well, I'll have to fork out more for wooden plaster. Strip them bedroom walls that crumble like shortcake. Mightn't have recognised you from this morning, Queenie, with a waist like a sheaf of cord, head the colour of butter. Flatterer. Well, I'm your own way. Yeah. Where's the uh, chugger go to? I don't know. Place on the coast, I think. Never been there. Come to that, I never been nowhere except round these parts. I were a chambermaid in a boarding house Charlie owned before he bought this hotel. He were divorced when I married him, but he were different then. Different? He were fun, and he liked a drink or two. Oh, good old Marty, what happened? Well, his sister married a Methodist minister. Together they converted him. To being a Methodist? No, to being teetotal. Charlie changed completely, no more fun. Just work and money and hoarding it all. That's why I'm still employed as a housekeeper, as well as working as chambermaid, receptionist, chief cook and bottle washer. I hope he pays you well. Well, I'm his wife, ain't I? Being canny is now a habit with Charlie. Still, you can't call it a bad habit, can you? Even says my tater peelings are too thick to give the pigs. Is him who's thick, I say. There's another of your doors, waiting at table. Well, Charlie's cooking in the kitchen. Fired Agnes, the last waitress. Too old and too slow. I haven't replaced her yet. My legs are killing me, though. I soon have varicose veins like her. What you need, my lass, is a decent break. Some chance. Even a day off now and then. Hey, day by the sea, eh? <laughs> Fresh, heady, salt breeze putting colour in your cheeks. Mm. Bit of sand between your twinkle toes, washed off cool by the water's edge. Whoa. Give over, Silas. I'm busy. How was the mulligatawny? <laughs> Lots better than the brown soup at school. Mulligatawny, that's what you call it. Tawny coloured dishwater, in my opinion, and you can tell that to the skin friend in the kitchen. Well, I carved you some nice roast beef. God almighty. Measly thin slices, ain't they? Thinner than a confessional biscuit. Sorry. Never mind. What's for pudding? Custard and cherries. Not much of them, I expect. Three cherries each, unstoned.
you off then. See everything runs smooth. And make sure Silas puts in a proper day's work. Well, they've done a grand job so far. Two rooms good as new, and I sew curtains and a bedspread. Chintz from that big house auction. Patchy, uh, floral on one wall, doves on the other, cheap and cheerful. You don't look so cheerful yourself this morning. Oh, I'm tired, that's all. Been up since five. Charlie's gone off for the day. Won't be back till late. Lots to do. Oh. Uh, Ned? Uh, uh, grab a tea and a bun and uh, go and sort them borders out in the other room. That's a good lad. What you need is a pick-me-up. I've got just the thing. What is it? Uh, There's alcohol in this. Silas, it is alcohol. You got you to sign the pledge as well? Oh, no. But... Well, then, taste it. Full of iron, do you the world of God? If Charlie knew, he... Why should he? Well, you'd be thrown out of the hotel like Mr McNally. Traveller hid a flask of Irish whiskey inside his mattress last week. Show some spirit, girl. Uh, sip a drop of that between them ruby lips. <laughs> Go on. Oi. Come on, ah, come on, that's better. That's better. Mm. What was that? Mm -mm. It's mm. nice. Red currant. They're sharper than... Elderberry and uh, ain't a flowery as cow's lip, but proper Moorish, eh? It's nice. Mm. <laughs> what I'd like to do is take you off right now, give you a day by the sea. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, why not? You're not serving meals till supper time, are you? No. Well, then. <laughs> take the train. There and back by six o'clock. No would be any wiser, it's that Cuspert and Ned can <laughs> help out at the desk. Oh, I would love to see the sea. Oh, that's, uh, that's settling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh but the only snag is I haven't got any money for the rail fare. I'll take care of that. Wicked doing a bunk like this. Charlie, oh, where's the arm? First time on a train. Oh, then sit back and enjoy it. And taking a drink. 
Hey, moderation, let it be said. <laughs> Charlie would have a fit. Well, we might at that, but you've got to think of yourselves for one scale. Yeah. But the uh, power of good is already uh, an air of freedom about you. <laughs> well, I hope it's not just the red current. <laughs> Look at that. Show off. Just ride it with the knees. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, gal. Time for the rest. <laughs> Who taught you how to do that? Oh, so long ago I can't remember. But it's uh, it's lovely working with flowers, you know, as they're delicate creatures. Look at these lovely aromas. I hope it's all right at the hotel. Wouldn't want to let Charlie down. You won't. I never knew it'd be like this. <laughs> You do now. Mm -hmm. There. A crown for Queen. May I have a little kiss, Your Majesty? <laughs> <laughs> You're a rascal, Silas. Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you behind the desk? I'm standing in. What do you mean, standing in? For whom? Where's my wife? She went out for the day. She did what? Why aren't you helping your Uncle Silas? He went out for the day as well. What have you to say, Silas? Not a lot. Are these your tools? Looks like it. 
cut and dried. Open and shut. Or rather, open by the means of. Wrong, Charlie. Silas didn't break open that box. I did. You admit as much? Yeah, but I didn't steal the money. I mean, how can you steal from yourself? Well said, girl. You tell him. You always lock that box away. But what's in it is mine as well as yours. Morning, noon and night, I work like a skivvy for no wages. But do I ask for any? No. Cos I'm my husband's wife. I'm his loyal partner. Somewhat in question right now. Well, from now on, I'm finished with being treated like a slave. What's he been filling your head with? Silas opened my eyes, that's all, Charlie. He got my dander up. He showed me what it's like outside of this damned hotel. He showed me that I am a person. I am a woman. I'm not just a drudge. Well, from now on, there's going to be some changes round here. A proper partnership, and that means respect. And a deal more gratitude. There's plenty in here to take on at least two more staff, including a barmaid. Yes, I said barmaid, serving proper drinks as befits the railway in. Living up to its name as it used to. And if you don't, I'll go on strike. Like it or not! <sighs> That's right, Charlie. Get down in your knees, count it all and put it all back in your precious box. And think of spending some of it, you dope. Well spoke, Queenie. Thanks for remembering my stick of rock, Uncle Silas. Uh -huh. Want a bit? Well, no, thanks. Uh, but save a bit uh, for the pony, though. He likes his sugar. What did you do at the seaside, Uncle Silas? Well, the usual things, you know. Uh, donkey rides, amusements. Dipping our toes in the water and the like. Did you play sandcastles? No, there weren't much time for sandcastles. Not much fun if you don't play sandcastles. Ooh, it was a good day out for Queenie, though, eh? It's like the pony, see? Yeah. Put him in a meadow with the sweet grass. He ain't too keen on going back and eating humble chaff. Oh, yeah. Mm, eh? 